Hello everyone and welcome back to Lucky Loaders 15 where I'll be giving you two of my best bets for tomorrow's racing where we'll be focusing our attentions across the RSC to the RS Jumps card at Nace. It looks a cracking card tomorrow, some decent graded contests and there's some interesting handicaps as well and we'll be getting our teeth stuck into them. Now before I give you those tips, quickly just want to reflect on how our selections performed today and boy I feel so sorry for I Wright who ran a gallant race again to finish in second place um, in the Skybet chase at Doncaster. We put him up as my extra tip. I thought today was going to be his day. You know, he was jumping brilliantly out in front, but he just got uh, uh, outspared in the closing stages. He just faded to the challenge of taking risks. So he did have to give quite a bit of a uh, weight away to but taking risks, to be fair to the horse, is a bit of a legend. He's a bit of a dude in the stay and handicap uh, chase division. Now, he won the Scottish National a couple of years ago. But, yeah, just so frustrating there for I Wright. I know uh, he did, uh, the jockey, Callum Bewley, did lose the whip. But I don't think that would have made much of a difference. But, yeah, just so frustrating for that horse, I Wright, because he's a brilliant horse. You know, he's one that's in my head and also as well in my heart. You know, both of them marry up and I've got a lot of emotional attachment to this horse I've been backing him all season I put him up at Kelso I put him up in the Charlie Hall to run a good race each way which he did and then I fancied him for the Labrooks as well and he still ran really well there to finish in second place just really unlucky for that horse I write I'm not sure what the future plans are with him be interesting to see what the handicapper does do but I still think if he only gets raised a pound or two he still might still be able to win a big pot um, so uh, fingers crossed it's not the last we've seen at I right at the top table you know in these handicaps because I do think he will win, a, win one of them I think the ultimate long term aim is the Scottish National maybe a trip in the ultimate at the Cheltenham Festival might be seen but yeah just so frustrating there of I right we got the each way money back on him but ultimately we wanted him to win on the day we did get a bit of place money as well with our nap which was Shang Tang for M Lavelle who I thought at one point was going to come there with a great challenge to uh, come and win at Doncaster we put him up last night at 10 to 1 each way with five places and that was being offered by uh, Sky Bet and he like all good each way selections just managed to sneak in there finishing in uh, fifth place he was advertised at 10 to 1 each way but the fine SP was 28 to 1 but for the profit and loss uh, because you can't get best odds guaranteed on these extra place races with Sky Bet Unfortunately, it's just going to have to be recorded at 10 to 1. But I saw some of you were able to get uh, those bigger prices. So if you did, uh, that would have been a nice each way return for you there. Still not going to complain on our 10 to 1. But it just means we've just come out with a slight small loss today. The other selections, Midnight Legacy. He just went down fighting for Martin Harley and Alan King, you know, just to finish in second place at Lingfield. So not not too bad with that one. But unfortunately, he just couldn't uh, do the job for us. And the other tip, Sanabad, he never really got into it today at Kempton. He was... Um, my uh, extra tip of the day but uh, yeah he just couldn't get involved for Tom Marquand and Ian Williams so yeah just slightly down for today but yeah if I write had got his head in front we would have been ahead today it's just it was one of those days with uh, there was just a bit of fine margin to it so yeah just the way it goes but yeah hopefully uh, we can bounce back and then the last day of January on a high we're going to be in profit for the month but it'd be nice just to have a top up and like I said at the top of this video we're going across to Ireland tomorrow to Nace it's currently heavy ground at the moment I haven't seen them about having an inspection over there obviously there's been so many inspections and lots of meetings cancelled due to the weather but fingers crossed they do get the green light and we're going to be going to my uh, nap uh, to kick things off in the 115 the grade three Liz Mullen heard all the feature race of the day and I thought Beacon Hedge would take all the beating here for Sean Flanagan and Noel Mead in the colours of Chickenstown. You can currently back this one at the time recording at 9 to 4, and that was available with Paddy Power and uh, Betfair. And I'm going to recommend a one point win bet here. Now, this horse this season has been running some really good races. He won on his seasonal reappearance at Down Patrick went very well, and then he went to Galway where he beat Grand, uh, Grand Roy, who's actually going to be uh, meeting him again tomorrow. That day at Galway, uh, our selection Beacon Edge had to give him five pounds because uh, Grand Roy went on to win a grade two on his uh, next start over Christmas. Uh, we're actually on level weights with him, so that's another feather in our cap there. That's a positive. 
and also as well our lad ran a great race um in the hatton's grace a grade one hurdle at furry house just uh getting beat by honeysuckle who you know is unbeaten and also as well we had to give away five pounds that day with beacon ed so yeah a lot of strong form claims to his name no me stable have been in pretty good form of late operating at 27 percent strike rate they had a horse win uh yesterday at navin with a horse called the devil's coachman and also as well, they had a, they had um, a nice uh, second place effort with Deal Kerr in the Gormoy Hurdle at Goran on Thursday. So the yard are going really well at the moment. Beacon Edge, the only concern could be maybe his health. He did have colic over Christmas, but I'm sure Noel Mead wouldn't be running him unless he was uh, confident of a big run. So yeah, I think there's a lot to like about his chances. The main danger on paper for me is Backerson, who even though despite the age of 10, still can run some very good races. And even though we do have to give away away, away give away um, seven pounds uh, in the race, there's only six pound six pounds between them on official rating. So if they were running in a handicap, he's only getting a pound more, which I, I'm okay with there. I just think the younger legs of Beacon Edge can uh, get the better of Backerson. And for me, I just think Beacon Edge represents a good bit of value there at nine to four. And I think he'll continue his rapid rise. And I think there's a bit more to come from him. So he's going to be my nap of the day tomorrow. That's Beacon Edge in the 115 at Nace. We then go to the 345 with my next best of the day. Um, we're going with a horse here called Punitive for Rachel Blackmore and Henry de Bromhead in this novice's handicap chase. He's making his handicap debut tomorrow off a mark of 130. And at the time recording, you can back him 7-1 to one with William Hill, who are offering four places on the race. I'm going to recommend a 0.5 each way selection here. And like I said, this horse is going to be making his handicap debut over fences tomorrow. He ran an incredible race last time out um, on his second chase start behind uh, Phil Duderis, who ran a good race behind Envoy Allen to finish in second place uh, that day when obviously it was the clash that didn't deliver there between Asteria and Falange and, um, and, uh, and Envoy Allen. So yeah, he uh, he uh, didn't probably get the spotlight on how good he ran. But uh, our selection punitive wasn't too far uh, behind him that day. Yukon Lil and also as well Brayside, who ran in that race, have let down the form. They took on Cole Reevey the other day, but I think they ran too bad to be true. And then if you go back through the hurdle form of last season, he was quite an progressive hurdler. But I think whatever he did hurdling was always a bonus and he was going to be the racing cliche, a chase in the making. He won some decent hurdles at Limerick and also as well at Navin on heavy ground so that shouldn't be a problem for him under Rachel Blackmore tomorrow I expect a good prominent ride and I just think off a mark of 130 he could have a few pounds to play here and I'll be disappointed if he couldn't make the frame so yeah he's going to be uh, my next best of the day that's punitive a uh, seven to one each way with William Hill 0.5 so yeah that's uh, the the two tips for tomorrow's race and quickly just recap then in the 115 at Nace is the nap that's Beacon Edge uh, a nine to four one point win bet and then the 345 at Nace punitive 0.5 each way seven to one four places William Hill so they're the two best tips for tomorrow's racing if you haven't done so already please make sure you hit the subscribe button for more videos here on my YouTube channel and remember to hit the thumbs up button also as well if you want to follow me on social media the best place to do so is on Twitter where my handle is at luckyloader15 and if you want to find out a little bit more about myself my website address is www.chrisloaderracing.co.uk so please game responsibly hopefully we can have some winners tomorrow and we'll be seeing you soon